Hello and welcome to With Well and Anderson. This is our monthly update we do on the outlook of the economy. And uh, actually we do it every, every three weeks. And your best investment is your own knowledge. We are, we're going to be talking about recession, which we are technically in. And I should first start by describing what is a recession. A recession is two straight quarters of negative gross domestic product. I need to talk about what gross domestic product is. That is the goods and service, finished goods and service produced by a country. Like cars, new houses, clothing, anything that's a finished good. And, um, well... We're sort of in, in, in a weird situation here um, that months ago, although we went into recession, unemployment was still low. And that's kind of unusual during a recession. But we're noticing now slow houses, um, construction slowing a little bit. This is uh, Tuesday the 4th. 2022, just so you have a reference. Housing prices are beginning to drop. Uh, credit costs, borrowing money is getting kind of more, more expensive. A lot of, there's a lot more part-time workers being hired. Corporations are beginning to downsize. The market is dropping. We're going to get to that later. And there's a, an issue potential of, uh, of stagflation, which we're going to do a whole separate series on. So, the question is, what do economists, how, what tools do they use to tell us what's the state of the, the economy? And, and we're going to go through that, but in order, to, so you can, when you hear the words, you're going to know what they mean. Um... But we have to understand what's the role of a central bank, which uh, plays a critical role in, 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 in the economy. In the United States, it's called the Federal Reserve. Um, it's called uh, the Bank of England in, in England. They all have kind of similar roles. Um, and in the United States, these, I'm going to mention a few tools in which the economists use to judge the condition of the economy. And again, I urge you to subscribe because this is going to be a monthly thing and you really can't afford to miss it now because we're in uh, some tough times. One of the tools the economists use is called the federal funds rate. Federal funds rate, I'll say it again slower. This is the money in which one bank will lend another bank to meet its reserves for the next day. A bank made to a bank is, that's their best customer. Another bank is your best customer. So they're going to get the best rate. To think of a reserve, which I mentioned, um, a reserve is the amount of money a bank has to have when they open in the morning. The, the law requires that a bank has a certain amount of money to meet the needs of opening in the morning. To give you an analogy of that, if you ever saw, I believe, the 1947 movie of It's a Wonderful Life where uh, uh, George Bailey is, is people are lying him in the bank to, to get their money out. Um, and, and he's almost running out of money. That would be what a reserve is for, to make sure you can accommodate the people that come in and, and, uh, and get their money. In the United States, the Federal Reserve also plays a role as the bank of last resort. It also controls the money supply, but in the U.S., it's a separate agency from the government. It manages the banking system. Um, it, 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 it plays a role in, 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 federal, in, 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 in treasury notes and interest rates. Um, so, 
another another tool that the economists use to measure whether we're doing okay or where we are is looking at the stock market. And recently what's been happening, we've been tracking this since May 27th, is the market, the, the standing in pause 500, which is probably the best indicator of the stock market because it's broad enough. We have dropped 800 points since May 27th and this is uh, beginning of October. Um, that's not good, obviously. I, I not need to go into that. Another tool the economists use is called the ISM PMI. It's the Institute of Supply Managers Purchasing Managers Index. It's a lot of words, but I'm going to tell you what they do. So when you hear ISM, your ears should perk up. Um, what they, what the IS, IMS and PMI do is they poll a group of purchasing managers and they ask them certain questions on their six month outlook. In other words, do they intend to hire more people, lay more people off? What do the sales look like six months from now? How much do they intend to spend on marketing? What do the inventories look like? Um, what are the input costs and logistics? From all this information they collect, the ISM PMI collects from the purchasing managers, they get an indication on what the market is going to look like six months from now. We have some indications here. And I'm going back to July. Um, in July, it was... It was 52.8. Um, that's uh, sort of the, 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 the metric that they use um, um, in indicating the, uh, the rate. In August, it was 52.8. It remained the same. In other words, the, the confidence level didn't drop for those two months. But in September, although it's not that bad of a number, we notice our first decrease. It's the confidence level has now dropped for the purchasing managers in terms of what they feel they're going to be doing six months from now. So that's a bad sign. Now, there's also something you're going to hear called the yield curve. Now, you have to go back to uh, uh, your old math days in high school if you can remember the plots and graphs. Um, the yield curve is a indicator, whereas the Treasury sells bonds, and they sell notes, bonds, and they sell bills. There's certain durations of time. When you're selling a two-year element, versus a 10-year element. In other words, you're going to invest in the Treasury note for two years as opposed to 10 years. The 10 years should pay you more of, of interest because you're taking a risk over a longer period of time. The two years should pay you less because you don't have to wait those eight years. What's happened here is Economists have seen a yield curve inversion. What that means is instead of the 10-year having a higher yield, the 2-year has a higher yield. What that means to economists is that people may be losing confidence in the, in, in the U.S. economy over a longer period of time. So people are putting their money into in, 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 the two-year uh, metric, the two-year piece is actually paying more than 10 years. So that's a lack of confidence. It's a, it's a major problem. Unemployment has slowly started to go up. I believe um, 
Again, this is uh, October. The last rate we had was in um, September, and that was 3.7, and it's gone up from 3.9. So unemployment is starting to um, to rise. Um, now let's let's just go into a couple of events that have have happened to bring you up to date. Um, general things that's happened in the world. We have, uh, as you know, this um, an oil issue, and um, uh, but before we get to that, China and Russia, China and India are starting to put pressure on Russia um, related to financing, related to oil. Um, I'm going to be jumping around with, with various points here that have transitioned since the last time we talked. Uh, this, most of the states, this is on student loans, these, again these are abstract points, on student loans most of the states are going to begin taxing uh, student loans. Uh, we got to look out for stagflation. We're going to do a video on that. But at a 10,000 foot view, stagflation is when you have rising unemployment and rising inflation at the same time. This is like in the 70s. And the fear is that might be what we're looking at. OPEC uh, has decided or to cut the oil uh, production, which should raise costs for us. Credit card debt is at an all-time high. Um, people are, 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 are going into, into credit card debt. The recent inflation has cost the American family thousands of dollars per year. Um, inflation is, 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 um, is, again, has been 8%. Um, there's been some issues with the crypto market, which we're going to go into at another point later on. Um, things things um, look to be very tight right now in, in uh, economic markets. And um, they, they don't look good. Um, Okay, so, thank you very much for your time. Um, give me a thumbs up and subscribe and have a great day. Bye.